Cookie and I were friends in high school, when she was in high school. And we used to deal drugs together. We used to sell LSD. And um, that's how Cookie and I met. Oh, I loved Cookie. She was the most brilliant person I'd ever met. I loved her so much. I adored her. I worshipped her. Cookie and I were very close for a really long time, like old girlfriend sisters, you know. And when she moved to New York, she really wanted to become famous. That was her big goal in life. She was Uno Famoso. That was it. And she did well. And she got her books published. She also had a drug problem, and that kind of held her back a lot. But um, she was the funniest. Well, I would pee my pants laughing with her. We put on stage performances and stuff in New York, and, and Sharon can really give you some stories with that cookie. She made me, we would sit around and just pee ourselves laughing at whatever. We'd make these plays up, you know, and, and um, we would just ad-lib these plays, you know, and then we'd perform at, at the Poet Center and all this shit, you know. And sometimes they were really bizarre, but uh, we had the best time. Um, and Cookie and I and Mink lived together in Provincetown several summers. Cookie and I were like bad girls together, you know, kind of like Eddie Haskell and Eddie Haskell. <laughs> John will tell you the same thing. Yeah. We were bad girls together. We just, we were so rebellious. That was it. We wanted to see how rebellious we could be and get away with it in whatever way was rebellious at that time. We were on Black Beauties and, and Old Crow or something, I don't know. And we're hitchhiking in miniskirts up to here, black fingernail polish and <laughs> bourbon bottles and Black Beauties. We were a mess. It was great. And we got kidnapped by these hillbillies that tried to, you know, we got in the car with them because they had booze in the car. Okay, we'll get in. <laughs> then we realized that they were taking us, trying to get us lost. And we were going through these toll booths and we realized that this is not the way we wanted to go. So we started writing notes to hand to the um, ticket taker, you know, the, the, um, the <laughs> help, please help us, <laughs> and trying to sneak it to the ticket taker or the uh, money, um, what do you call yeah, it? Yeah, what do you call it? Uh, toll booth attendant. Toll booth attendant, thank you. And um, they catch us and rip it off, yeah, <laughs> and we go, ah! And we were coming down off of speed, right? And you know how that is. Or maybe you don't, but it's horrible. You know, it's very agitating, agitative. And um, these guys uh, took Cookie off. Mick and I jumped out of the car, tried to pull her out in the baggage, and they sped off. And we were left at this other hillbilly's house. I mean, real Appalachia. And we called the police. and. Mink and I stayed at the police station, and they, they were looking out for Cookie, you know, and through the woods. She was hiding in the woods until morning. They were drunk, passing out, looking for her. They were going to rape her. Well, they, I mean, they were so stupid and drunk that, you know, she just hid underneath her bag. I don't know how she got her bag out of her Some car. Or somewhere. And then got a ride home from a, a what do you call it, a, a ranger. And can you imagine? So then, when we were at the, um, the police station, they were giving us a hard time because I had a sketchbook. I was an artist. I had a sketchbook with nude sketches in it. Oh, and they were going to confiscate it. What are you going to do with that? Probably jerk off in the back room with it. You know, and then they told us, well, we, you know, we, um, we have to leave town, but we can't hitchhike. So we didn't know how to get out of town. Did you have any money with you? Mink had all the money. Then we got to the air, somehow we hitchhiked. We got to the airport and we were going to try to take a plane to Provincetown because something was holding us back. Some of the, you know, higher powers were holding us back from getting there. And it was a holiday and there was all these naval guys at the, uh, and there was no planes. We had to spend two nights in the, plan, in the airport before we finally got to Provincetown. Cookie I met in Provincetown because I was there, I, I moved in the early 70s, and it was 
it was great then. I think David Lockery was living there in the winters. A lot of lunatics lived there in the winter. Um, there was a girl named Black Beverly who had taken too much acid and walked backwards for a whole year because she had headaches and walking backwards really alleviated it. And typical of Provincetown that nobody thought that was such an odd thing, that you just saw her walking backwards. And we crept up and looked in her window and she really walked backwards around the house. So it wasn't a gag. But that was the typical of the kind of people that lived there. And I met Cookie and we started becoming friends and we went out to movies together. We started hanging out. Cookie wasn't writing until she moved to New York. She had, um, she started to, she showed me a few things because I, I had been writing in Provincetown, but she showed me a couple of her writing things and I thought they were great. And when she came to New York and got the job at Details, I think that was where, what, was that her first job? I think I a think Details that, magazine, and she would do Ask Dr. Ask Dr. Mueller in an art column, which was hilarious. My favorite thing that she ever did was she went to, she didn't go to one of the shows she was supposed to review, and she, so she just wrote up that the painting was very bad and found out that it was a sculptor. <laughs> so she called up my friend hysterical, what am I going to do? And he said, just write the next column, said, I just wanted to see if you were paying attention, you know, and she covered her ass that way. <laughs> it was quite funny. <laughs> but Cookie was a great character, and she, anytime she walked out the door, her life was a story. I mean, everything she did. But like she would say, I'm going to go to get, you know, the milk, and it would be something lunatic what happened to her. So her life was like that all the time, you know. She, she and Sharon, um, her girlfriend at the time, brought, they had some money they had to bring to the bank, and they brought it and dropped it in a puddle and brought it home and baked it in the oven to dry it off and set it on fire. I mean, it was that kind of stuff happened all the time. It was, it was just, I mean, she was a great character, you know, and every day was like that for her. So thank God she put it down because they were very funny stories. I mean, she would tell us what would happen in the course of the day and you'd just think, God, this is too good. I mean, she just had adventures. <laughs> She would say, I'm going to dress down and go to Hyannis to pick up my welfare checks. And I would see her on the highway in a monkey fur coat looking like Cookie Mueller. I mean, she looked amazing. And I thought, she thinks that's normal. I mean, she has no clue anymore what normal is. She doesn't. She really doesn't. She was really pretty unique. She really quite was. She was great. How old was she when you met her? I met her. She was young. I mean, she had just had Max, her child Max. And I remember going over to her house one day and um, Max, she was... <laughs> she was peeling potatoes and Max was screaming, crying. And I said, what's going on? She said, well, potatoes are his friends. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> so, I mean, it was just, she had just had Max. So she was, she was pretty young. I mean, she was young then, but I guess we all were then. <laughs> In Provincetown, she was pretty sedate. I mean, she raised Max, and, you know, it was really quiet there. But when she got to New York, she became something else. She became, and that was when she started to write, too. And I think she became a real personality in her own right. I think in Provincetown, she was just, you know, just cookie. But in, when she got to New York, she became quite spectacular. And she was really known. I mean, people knew her everywhere. I mean, she was sort of a local downtown celebrity and not just from John's movies it was really her in her own right kind of you know the, I mean just just for being cookie she was just a character she was around to be a character and uh, she was pretty John you know she she had this lisp which I always loved too uh, and she was really full of spirits and really smart and um, just a lot of laughs uh, and strange things would happen to her. Her, her and Sharon went on a vacation. She went to Italy a lot, Positano, and uh, they had rented a car. And um, they'd taken the car, and on the last day before they were supposed to return it, they had gotten stuck on a um, on a train crossing, and the gate fell on top of the roof, and crushed the roof. So they got out and they said, oh my God, what are we going to do? Oh my God, what are we going to do? And they said, well, let's just return it. What are we going to do? Maybe they won't notice it. Sharon goes to Cookie. Sure, they won't notice it. There's a crease on top of the car. She says, I don't know. Maybe they won't notice it. So they drive to the rental car place. <laughs> it's a typical Cookie story. They drive, they return this crushed car. The top is crushed, the roof. And they return it and the guy checks the car out and lets him go and doesn't see the, uh, the crushed roof. Why? He was a dwarf. There was a dwarf working 
at the rental car place, and he was the guy checking the car in. <laughs> oh, I, it was uh, it was one. Here's another story. Um, uh, Cookie liked to be out and about. She went to a lot of parties and stuff. Uh, she uh, crawled the fire escape to get into Studio Fifty Four. Those kind of stories. But one of my best one uh, best stories about her was uh, in this kind of uh, uh, context was she was in Berlin, and she had not uh, she didn't have enough money to pay the hotel bill, so in order to avoid the hotel bill, she took like an exit. She bagged her, packed her bags. She had a little bag or something in Berlin, and she left the exit in back of the hotel. And there's one was trying to like get away from the you know not be seen in the lobby, so she was looking for a way out. And there were all these, you know, alleyways and stuff like that. And she came to a wall. She climbed the wall. She was starting to climb the wall. And she realized she got to the top. She was at the Berlin Wall. And she was headed in the wrong direction. She was headed into East Germany. <laughs> that was another cookie story. She wrote an essay about that. Did she? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I didn't read that one. I think she was trying to get out of the laundry bill as well. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. That true story. I mean, these, these are amazing stories. Uh, and it all just happened to cookie. You know. That must have been a tough that poor child. That's right, she died just shortly after her boyfriend died, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Husband. Husband. Vittorio. Yes, it was horrible because she was demented in the end and it lasted forever. Oh, so she, was she not cognizant of people? We don't know. She was not able to respond, that's all we knew. And she was paralyzed on one side of her body and I think blind in one eye. And she was very vegetable-like and it was horrible How to see that. that. A long time. She was like a tough year. cookie. <laughs> yeah, more maybe. I noticed that she, her speech was going one year. How do you mean, like slurred or? Uh, different. <laughs> more infantile, a little more infantile. Mm -hmm. And things that she wanted to talk about was um, not like her usual high-powered self. And um, then she called me up and she wanted to spend a weekend with me, so I went out and spent a weekend with her and I noticed that she was um, her, she wasn't right, her brains weren't right. And um, then it went pretty quickly downhill after that. Sharon took care of her a lot. Sharon's a good person. Yeah, I spoke to her a couple of days before she died. Uh, I talked to her on the phone. Uh, and we were laughing again. Yeah. Uh, she visited us in California, her and Victoria, when they had found out, mm -hmm. when they'd gotten the diagnosis. And, uh, you know, it was uh, so many people were gone. A lot of people burned out off of those days, I mean, you were you burned out or you stayed alive. It was when it was a it was a kind of a fast, crazy crowd. Uh, but that's the kind of people we were, really. 